Welcome. Evening, morning, afternoon. Eight weeks after a good start. Thanks for uh, tuning in. And uh, yeah, let's get this, let's get this going. Uh, who we got in here? Uh, David Webb. Welcome, mate. I, if you if you're new here, um, thank you for joining. It's always always a pleasure to see new new people in the fold. Uh, <laughs> how you doing, David? You're right, mate. You good? Let's get this uh, get this chat window sorted out. Who else we got there? We got we got uh, we got Simon. How you doing, Simon? You good, mate? Hey Ian, how you doing? So I'm just short, shorting, sorting out. It's gonna be a long one tonight. <laughs> sorting out the chat window here so I can see it. Uh, yeah, Ian, how you doing, mate? Uh, Liz, how you doing? Has it been a while, is it, Liz? How long? Goodness, how long has it been then? Hey Annie, how you doing? Michael, you took a break, did you, Michael? Interesting. Interesting. How long have you been away then, Michael? I mean, was this like pre-COVID or I like, took a break last week or 10 years? How long has it been? Hey, Dave, how you doing? Yeah, I am. I'm uh, I'm feeling better this week, actually. Yeah, yeah, I'm feeling better this week, actually, um, which is good. Thank you for asking. Simon, uh, Dave, very, very kind. Uh, looks like my wife has got it now, though. So I've just, I've just been living off bacon sandwiches for the last last few days some of them weren't burnt as well so I mean you know I've been uh, taking care of myself you know I don't want to brag too much but uh, not much to it I've been away a few months Michael okay okay yeah yeah uh, any any reason just like just lost the lost the mojo or yeah how's the uh How's it been getting getting back into it? All good? Uh, did I just like to see up there? Uh, Ian, how you doing? Ian, it's, it's, Ian, has it been a while since you've been in here as well? Been a little while. Uh, and Liz, how have you been anyway? Have you been, you've been too busy doing photo shoots or too busy doing other stuff? Anything, anything exciting? Uh, this has been away for six weeks. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, yeah, so you, so you missed missed the last few. Yeah, yeah. Um, hope you've been busy there. <laughs> I know, Dave. I know, mate. I have been like, I don't think I get enough credit. You know, I've just been feeding myself. It's 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 really been hell. You know, um, I know my wife's been getting a lot of sympathy, but. I just feel like I've been overlooked, you know. I've been making at least at least one meal a day, and then cereal in the morning. I, it's like, you know, I don't want to brag, but I think I got the hang of it now. Um, Ian says, "Yeah, week before last, one of these days, I'm gonna sort myself out, <laughs> sort myself out, and uh, where's this chat window?" and upload I'm gonna sort myself out and upload a photo just get the notification at 7 pm to that you can upload now Ian mate yeah whack it in there all good yeah whack it in there um let's uh let's have a look here so yeah just scroll back to uh the image from last night throw something in there if you don't know if you like you know I haven't shot anything recently uh all good just be interesting to see what you've been uh working on we got we got a few in there. We got a few in there this week, which is nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, Dave. Yeah, you need to get on my level, Dave. Honestly, it's all very well toast, but you know, you need to get on my level, mate. <laughs> it's terrible. I shouldn't. I shouldn't really joke. It's terrible. It's terrible. <laughs> I'll get cancelled. I just 
Uh, like Alan said, lots of changes. Closed my automotive customation shop in Houston. Oh, shit, man. I'm sorry, man. Yeah, yeah. That's where you had the... Um, you were doing the LED tubes, right, in a... Is that right? Am I... You did the LED tubes or strips in, in like, a ring around the model or, like, a doorway around the model sort of thing? Am I thinking of... Because you... They're the sort of the LEDs that you would put on cars. Am I thinking of the right guy? Maybe I hope, hopefully I am. Um, close shop in Houston, took a full time software position in San Antonio. Okay, nice. I will have a, a lot more time for photography now. I'll probably do a one on one once I get settled in. Yeah, nice, man. Nice. Good. I mean, software gig as well. I mean, I mean correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, a little bit more, a little bit more money as well. It's always nice. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, a little bit more money, free time. That'll be good, man. That'll be good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Liz, a part of a committee now at a local camera club. Oh, nice to organise shoots. Nice. The clubs, Bowen's lights have no PC sync port as they were not invented yet, and the little cubes on jacks for the triggers. Nice. Yeah. So <laughs> I think I know what you mean. Actually, I think I've got some of those. Maybe I finally retired them. I do know the ones you mean, though. They're actually super expensive to get now. Liz, yeah, if you still got them. I mean, I know you still got them for the camera cut, but, but look after those, because they're actually super expensive. Because um, I I was trying to sync up this massive set once, and I was using you know new lights as well as old lights, and uh, I was syncing them up with these um, with these jacks that, that you're talking about. Like, like they called it like slaves, optical slaves, as it were. And you and and I was, and I had an extension cable, like a guitar lead, right? That I was plugging into the into the light, and then an extension cable with this slave on it. Um, so they're actually really expensive now. Uh, I mean, I'm less unless I'm thinking of something else. But I know like the like the proper ones. Maybe you can get you can get the speed light ones that are a little bit cheaper, maybe. But yeah, I think the um, like the proper ones that you would plug in the like the big audio jack uh, in, into the back of the lights are really pricey, yeah. Uh, 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 Imakar said, yeah, made from the underglow strips. Yeah, yeah, so it was you. Okay, cool, nice, yeah. Uh, Liz says 80 watts at a regular light bulb as the modeling light. Any tips on managing antiquated lights would be appreciated. So 80 watts and a regular light bulb as the modeling light. 80 watts? Holy shit, Liz, how... It can't be 80 watts. How old have you got? Have you got a name or how old they were? Um, and managing antiquated lights would be appreciated. I mean, if it's 80 watts, how dark can you get the room, right? So uh, if you can get the room super dark, then it's fine. You know, it doesn't it doesn't matter, 80 watts. Um, I mean, 80 watts, you're still gonna be able to, I mean, a room would need to be dark though. It would need to be very dark, yeah. Uh, you may just be better off just just using the tungsten bulbs. Just let me just let me grab mine a second. My, my old ones here a second. Yeah, I'm still looking for those for those slaves. I just said they're really expensive and look after them, and I've just lost them. So, two seconds. So I did find it, yeah. So those of you who were uh, who were born after 1970 <laughs> and uh, aren't aware of what what these are. So as far as I'm aware, Liz is talking about uh, one of one of these things, which you basically obviously plug that 
into the actual uh, strobe itself and then in there is like an optical optical slave thing in there and yeah so what I've done in the past is I've just got this old guitar lead right so you know you're plugging you're plugging that end into the light and then this is like a five meter cable and then you're plugging that into there so you're able to fire lights that are very very far away because sometimes um I've been in situations, I've even been in smaller places actually, where there's been like a lot of metal work on the wall, uh, which was actually affecting with the radio waves of the of the trigger. So it was like it was like a London nightclub sort of thing, and it was it was it was small, so you think, oh radio would be fine, but everything was like matte black walls. I, I don't know what it was. It was like a, some sort of Faraday cage in there, uh, with all the fancy metal work crap on the on the walls, right? And that was actually affecting the radio triggers so we had to resort to those i had those in the bag those all those um optical slaves and yeah they were actually able to trigger the uh the lights that were in like different rooms but still in shot as it were yeah yeah uh, so as if you use an audio adapter you can connect the modern three point uh, two pieces and cable the old good gotcha yeah good jack yeah Take a picture next time. I had to use the modeling light for my images. The trigger wouldn't sit right in the camera. It was super grainy. It was a 20 second shoot though. That's the one. Yeah, cool. Perfect. So it is the same one. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. Like in all honesty, Liz. Yeah, I mean, you just you're just better off shooting shooting tungsten. Yeah. Um, I mean, I got I got some of the some of the old uh, Bowens Esprits here, right? So you got the old flash tube around the outside here and then you just got this um these these bobs you I, know, I bought these on ebay good noise yeah asmr pay me later uh and you can just and these can be super bright like 240 watts or something like that um, which in all honesty unless you unless you're photographing something that's very fast moving it's just gonna be fine yeah you really you just don't, don't need to worry about the flash. Now they will get hot, of course, but so you got to be careful with gels and that sort of thing. But if that's the uh, if that's the the tech that your camera club has, then that's the that's, that's what you got to go with. Yeah. Uh, someone says I got given a couple of those. Uh, uh, the Bowen's light somebody had hanging around for twenty years. Yeah, exactly, Simon. Yeah, that you you're talking about. You say a couple of those. You mean the Esprits or you mean the uh, optical slaves, yeah. The one talk has a trigger for them built into the built in the US. <laughs> Use these valves. Jesus, that's nuts. Yeah, definitely grab a picture, Liz. I'd love to see those actually. Yeah, I'd be interested. Yeah. Um, Michael says I use those bulbs, but they get so hot, melt my modifiers. Thing I'm trying to do. Yeah, they do. I mean, there is. It, it is kind of weird because we just we just we just lived with that twenty years ago. Um, that was just normal. Like that's just the lights that we had, and um, yeah, it was just it was just totally normal to be dealing with those hot LED, um, those hot modeling bulbs. Uh, I mean, I mean, on even on even on those old lights, you can actually turn the modeling bulb power down real low. Um, but uh, but yeah, they do get incredibly hot. Melting your modifiers. What sort of modifiers are you using? I suppose if you're using more modern modifiers that are you know plasticky or something like that then yes yeah i, I have I, I have melted bits and pieces in the past like plastic modifiers and that sort of thing yeah uh so you can swap those out michael for uh leds yeah and i have i was speaking to somebody uh, recently actually who was saying that he was doing that for a friend he was swapping out some of the very um very hot tungsten bulbs and he was uh, basically fixing a led in there i mean you can do it's, it's i mean i don't know whether it's worth it really i, mean, I suppose if you um i i don't know i don't know i just think i guess you gotta you gotta gauge your uh value that you're gonna get from these but uh let's have a look uh, 
my point being is let's have a look here just just at the lowest end in terms of studio flash heads that are good as in usable uh so look like these okay this is 400 watts fine uh you know if you want to save even more money you, you know you can get these 200 watts now right no meme these are these are absolutely viable very very good in terms of consistency now they've got to be plugged in and uh but they still have a still still have an exposed flash bulb they still have the tungsten bulbs and that sort of thing but um you know for people wanting to get wanting to get into like usable studio lights i know your camera club probably doesn't have a huge amount of huge amount of money but like in in terms of like decent lights that will that will do very well uh being used for a very long time you know years in fact like these ones you know 100 125 quid you can't can't really go wrong yeah uh triggers but it was still three 500 watt sprees as well oh nice simon nice yeah i mean look, those those sprees are yeah what 21 years old or something i bought them straight out of art college 2002 i think i bought four of them yeah um i mean they're still usable i mean like they're here as as backups if if something happens and i would use them i wouldn't be like oh i don't have anything i wouldn't i wouldn't question to uh use them yeah um valve operated triggers to electronic diffuse led lights in the same chat something right <laughs> i know right no yeah yeah um that's great, Liz. Though, yeah, congrats on getting in the camera club there, and uh, you know, I think, I think helping any anybody, you know, learn and you know, get 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 creative, try something new. Um, camera clubs are great. Yeah, I, I they get they get they get a lot of a lot of bad rep for sure from you know proper nerds and uh, can be a bit cliquey and a bit snobby as to what camera brands and lighting brands are using and that sort of thing, but. Um, there are certainly a ton of great ones out there and yeah, well worth, well worth, if you, if you, ha if you don't go to one and was kind of interested, it is well worth seeking out maybe your local one. It's not going to be the end of the world to just to, just to drop in, um, once, once, twice, see if there's, um, see if there's anybody there that, you know, that you, that you gel with, um, yeah, definitely worth checking them out. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. um, I have the Godox SK400 with the LED modeling lamp. You see, I am terrible with this stuff. The Godox SK400. Oh, there you go. That's that. I I wouldn't be at all surprised if that's exactly the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, pretty much. Oh, but it's with the LED. Interesting, interesting. But I. But that's going to be because this this one here that I showed you is uh, this is just Pixar Pro um, rebranding the Godox uh, name. So so that's going to be the same flash and that sort of stuff. But you pay a little bit extra and you get the LED. Yeah, nice. Okay, LED modeling bulb. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Good shout, Liz. Yeah, good good shout. Yeah, that's I mean, that's four hundred watts as well. So so what do we look at there? So we got. So the 400 watts back here was, what, 154? Yeah, there you go. So you could even get LED 300 one there for, oh, there you go, there you go. Cool, yeah, can't argue with that, can you? If, if you're worried, if, if people are worried about the um, the heat of the tungsten and that sort of thing, then yeah, that is great. I mean, it's actually, I, I actually thought they would be way more, but they're actually um, 300 watts I mean, it's yeah, it's damn near the same. So it's just just down to um, personal personal preference, really. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, nice. That's the thing, really. It's all very well, you know, spending five, six thousand pounds on a on a head, but like if it was me and I had a young person starting out, or anybody starting out in studio lighting i wanted to learn more i'd be you know if you, and you've got a limited budget honestly just like you're far better off getting two or three cheaper lights like this than you are just getting one 
fancy one that has HSS and all that all that stuff and TTL like you are in all honesty better off getting getting three heads that that do the like the core thing that you want them to do over getting one like expensive one that does does lots of lots of fancy things that you may not use yeah Dave has been asked to give a talk at Durham Photographic Society next year should be interesting I think the even have a member with a digital camera there <laughs> cheeky bastard <laughs> Um, apologies, anybody from Durham here? Uh, I'm, I'm, sure, <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure you all love your digital cameras. Uh, thank you. Is there current ten percent discount? Thank you. Twenty three. Is there current? Oh, okay. Okay. What at um, Pixar Pro? Nice, nice. I think I have a discount code as well. But I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know whether it's ten percent or five percent. But yeah, if if you're saying that that is the uh, that is the code for ten percent. Yeah, crack on, guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's the other one that everybody uses at the moment? Uh, the AD two hundreds, right? These these little fellas. Everybody's. I always speak to people and they're like, "Oh yeah, I've got the AD two hundreds or like the Pixar Pro equivalent, the, the Pika two hundred. But yeah, people people love these things, man. Yeah, yeah. And they're okay. They're fine, it's, it's, especially if you're. Um, like you want to carry a couple in your in your rucksack or something like that. I mean that's a no brainer, right? Um, just make sure you use the exposed bulb section here. The only downside of that is there's no modelling bulb, which which can be a little bit of a pain, but still um, excellent excellent little lights. Yeah. Um, right. So what are we doing here today? So we're gonna uh, every couple of weeks I do a do a live stream and go through some of these. Uh, some of these shots that you guys are posting and sharing and I do that uh, as in you just post an image on the previous previous day so yesterday I posted them and share a shoot you guys pop your images in the comments and I'll go through them uh, but yeah every, every couple of weeks to do one of these we just have a just have a little discussion maybe I'll pull some into Photoshop have a play with some you know colors and offer suggestions and that sort of thing so um, so yeah, that's that's what we do. Uh, we also just have a little bit of a chat about what's going on. Something, I mean, you know, hot topics at the moment and that sort of thing. So probably probably do that in a minute. I'll have a chat about uh, NAB or NAB over there in Vegas. To see what some of the things that they've been talking about. So if anybody has been following NAB, NAB, how do you, how do you, how do you say it? Like I, I've never been. So, so oh my god, like, uh, where is it? Yeah, so I just pulled up a couple of bits that, that I'd saw in the um, headlines that they were talking about from uh, NAB 2023. So if, if anybody's been following it and, and has got anything that they saw that was, that was interesting, I will say that NAB is generally for video, right? So that's why some of you may be like, oh, I haven't really heard of that. Is it, you know, why haven't I heard of that? It's mainly because it's for video. So there's a lot of video lights and that sort of thing. But as we know, we're seeing a lot of video lights uh, crossing over into the uh, photographic, you know, stills side of things. You know, we've just been talking about LEDs a lot here. We've just been talking about people playing with LEDs and making them work and that sort of thing. And, you know, as many of you know, I am, you know, a master of light for rotor light, which uh, you know this light that's poking in here. Good noise. This light that's poking in here, which I just, I'll just show you in a second, is the um, Titan X1, which is a uh, cinema light. You know, so it's um, it's a big, big, beefy light. But was but they you know then started to work on the uh, AOSes, which was a sort of a, a slightly streamlined version of of the uh, Titan, but for far less money. My point being is that we're seeing more and more crossover from video into stills now than we than we ever have done in, in the past, mainly because LEDs are becoming bright enough now that uh, it, and at, at an affordable rate, right? Ari was was making, you know, lights before, but they just cost an absolute fortune because we think as stills photographers, oh, they just put an extra couple of zeros on it when, when they try and sell anything photographic. Well, you can add another couple of couple of zeros on that if it's if it's video because everything just costs so much but seeing as the pricing of LEDs and that has come down so much um, you know 
it's now started to blend a little bit and it's just like LEDs are just so easy to use it's just what you see is what you get it's it's just it's you know it's it's nuts yeah um so Dave says yeah love my little AD 200s that's what we were just we were just talking about that we were just talking about the uh uh wherever that was it's already gone yeah this here and sort of reliable and dual heads are great bonus yeah which is and and yeah and this is what everybody says so you got so you got this Fresnel head here and then you can switch it out for this exposed bulb thing here. I mean, I would always recommend if you're using any 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 modifiers that well, really any modifiers really. I would always try and use the exposed bulb to throw that light around the modifier rather than the Fresnel head that throws it straight forward. Um, but but yeah, we'll speak a little bit about that in a in a second as well because I wanna I wanna sort of chat about some optical snoots and that sort of thing especially with leds but yeah and then i think dave says it goes on that the modeling light is, is pants though yeah they're very very dim yeah, yeah hey sterling how you doing hi jake finally made it a little easy earlier just went and bought a new body my old body was getting a bit flabby <laughs> hey i was gonna make the joke uh and then you you made the joke for me mate um what did you buy? What did you buy, Sterling? Uh, the AI image that won an award with Sony. Scandalous on BBC News. Okay. Okay. Let's just have a let's have a quick look at that real quick. Because I, I mean, there's been a. I may have seen it. There's been a bunch of. Uh, So there's been a bunch of um, AI images winning. I haven't seen this one though, uh, Liz. So thank you for that. Yeah, I haven't seen this one. So Sony World Photograph Photography Award 2023 winner refuses award after revealing AI creation. I don't know, man. It's pretty sus, right? I mean, I'm surprised they. Come on, like they should have spotted that's AI. Like, it's not obvious, obvious, but like it's definitely. I am sure the comments were like, how did you not know that was AI? Come on. Yeah, yeah. Um, yikes. But there's been there's been a bunch of these lists, as I'm sure you're aware, there's been a bunch of these images winning, um, these AI images winning comps. Like, fair play to the guy or girl who was like, yeah, no, just, just memeing, keep the, keep the prize. I was just... I just wanted to show you how good AI art was doing. Like, fair play to them. They, they could have taken the prize, but, you know. Uh, thank you for that, though, uh, Liz. Yeah. Dave says, is the Titan still brighter than the new AR? So what Dave's referring to is this is this Titan um, X1 here. Now, I did, I did a uh, comparison a little while ago between, like, how bright the like the AOS versus the Titans are. The reason I say that is because the Titans are super expensive, right? They're very expensive lights for people coming from the stills world. Now for, um, for uh, video videographers and people buying LEDs and that sort of thing, like, you know, LED lights can cost, can, can cost 10, $15,000. So, like these, these LED lights are not expensive in the LED video world, but um, but they are for our still shooters. I just want to see because I'm sure in one of these articles a little while ago I did a comparison in terms of brightness, and I just wanted to see. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so so I own the Titan X One. Let me just show you guys. Yeah, so this is the Titan X, Titan X one, and you know, two and a half grand for one. Okay, compared to what the AOS two, which is what, um, where's the buy button? So the base kit is a thousand. So um, I was actually surprised when, when I when I when I clicked on that price. I think because that Titan X one is 
I suppose it, it is it's on sale, uh, excluding that as well. So, um, but yeah, so the Titans are obviously very expensive, uh, and I've got a couple of them here, and I've also got a couple of the Aosis, which is the light behind this. So you know, and you can get you can get a decent Aos kit for you know reasonable money. And people are always like, oh, well, it's all very well, you've got the Titan Jake, but it's so much brighter and that sort of thing. It, 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 it really isn't that that much brighter. So what I did was this was, this was a test. Uh, so brace yourselves for some nerd talk a minute. Uh, so for example, so both of the lights were 100% power, uh, no no diffusion on either of them, and they were one meter from the background, uh, 60th of a second ISO 100. So the other thing with LED lights that a lot of people overlook is the difference in power at varying Kelvin ranges, right? So uh, you can see here that the like the orange line here is the AOS and the Titan is is the red line here. So we can see that when they're used at normal, I say normal, like you know five thousand, five and a half thousand Kelvin, they're they're practically the same brightness, right? We're talking like super minimal, super minimal difference here. Uh, so let's have a look, 5,000 Kelvin, 5.6, F5.6 and 2 tenths uh, for the AOS and then the Titan is F5.6 and 5 tenths. So it's 3 tenths of a stop brighter at the you know medium or 5,500 Kelvin. So my point being is that they are going to be um, they're going to be very similar. Now, what's interesting on something that I had overlooked was that Dave asked an interesting question here. He says, "Is the Titan still brighter than the new AOS?" So what he's what what Dave's mentioning here is the fact that there is a what do we got AOS two Pro. So these are the new ones that came out last year. Now I don't I don't have any of these. I don't own any of these. Uh, AOS 2s, but AOS 2 Pros. But what is um, what is interesting, and what Dave's alluding to here, is that these are 25% brighter than the old AOS. So, based on that, and based on this, I would argue that yes, Dave, that the new Pros are definitely going to be brighter than than the Titans. I actually hadn't hadn't even realised that until you until you mentioned it. So, if I get some. I'll test it. I'll see, and I will. Uh, yeah, I'll let you know. Yeah, yeah. You got the you got the EOS. All right. Oh, nice, Sterling. Okay, cool. No, nice. Yeah. You pleased? Pleased with it? Yeah. Full frame. Full frame with the same sensor as the okay, Air Mark Three and the same great focus and capabilities. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Fingers met. Right, Dave. I know on that on that image. It's just like yeah, you're right, Liz. I mean, it would anybody? I I just find it. I I just find it. I'm sure the comments of that were just like, how did you not know that was like that? That that wasn't AI. Yeah, it's nuts. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, the um, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I wonder. I wonder who. I, I pause there because I'm ch I'm trying to choose my words. Um, Oh, Liz bringing in the like the hot news. This is this is this is fresh out the oven. This news. Thank you, Liz. Yeah, that's just why I hadn't heard of it. Um, yeah, I, I, competitions and photo competitions. Look, I, I think it's great to to you know put your skills side by side with your peers, right? See where you stand up. I think that's fair, and I think that's normal to want to uh, want to see see how you uh, hold up against your um, peers and that sort of thing. I, so if you want to enter photo competitions absolutely fine um my take on them though is that most of them are just a, an, an absolute scam in all honesty you know especially if you have to pay five bucks an image or 20 bucks an image to enter uh just avoid those like 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 the plague also try and get an idea of who's going to be judging it uh that, that that would be my that would be my um you know like uh, advice if you, if you know who the judges are and you can see who the judges are and you can look at their work and you go do you know what these guys actually they, they produce some, some good work know what they're talking about uh yeah i'd be you know then 
fair enough. But for the most part, competitions are just an absolute scam. They're just they're just rife. Yeah, they're just rife. Sony World Photography Award though, like you, I expect better from from them on that. I really do. Yeah, I I expect better from them on that. But we live in um, crazy times, man. Yeah, we live in crazy times. Uh, okay. Uh, Sterling says I'm getting really tired of AI I'm just being passed off as people's work. It's the AI's work. <sighs> Hey, yeah, no, you're preaching to the choir here, mate. Yeah, I mean, don't get me started on it. Yeah, um, I think it's fine if people want to play with it, have a bit of fun with it. And yeah, I think there are ways that you can use it. You know, I, the, you know, last live stream I did, um, I'd just been chatting to Chris Knight. Uh, you know, beautiful, beautiful images. He's He's been playing with it. He's, he's made a um, separate account that has no no affiliation with him uh, portfolio and he's been he's been playing with ai images beautiful images in there um, but he's, he's keeping it separate right you know he's keeping it separate he's playing with it uh it has no affiliation with him i mean it's him making them but like nobody would know that, it, that it's his account in any way and, and that's what i would recommend you do if you want to play with it then by all means he was also saying that look i use ai to maybe um add some like he took a wedding picture and like there was like the hair was a bit flat and he was like, right, I want, I'll, I'll get AI to give me uh, some hair for this image that was blown in the wind. So he did his, you know, he did his prompts and that sort of thing. And it gave him, yeah, I think he cut out like the hair to put it on a, put it on a black background and uh, as an example image and got AI to make him the hair blowing in the wind. It looked amazing. He just put it on his, on his original shot. And, um, Everybody's happy. Same with the dress. You know, get a bit of movement in the dress. Cut the dress out. Gave it to AI. You know, gave it some. Um, gave it this beautiful movement. Put it. Put it back in its image. So, like the water gets real muddy, right? It, it, it's all very well having like, this is straight AI. Then we have you know straight photography, and then you know you got people being, in my opinion, sensible like like Chris, where you where you we you're merging the two, using it as a tool. You know, whereas before you may purchase stock imagery to put in there and that sort of thing. You know, is it all your image? No. So it's it's definitely going to be it's going to be it's going to be money. Yeah, it's going to be money. Yeah. Uh, Wex have an offer on the AOS Two Explorer kit for eight four nine. Really? Damn. Okay. Thanks for pointing that one out. Man. Let's have a look. Uh, do, 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 do. Really? Okay. Nice. That's the thing as well. See, you got to remember with these with these companies, um, Rotolite, you know, don't want to be in a position to undercut the people that are selling it for them, right? So, usually, if you go straight to the brand, it's certainly going to be at the top end in terms of price. Um, I mean, you may be able to get, you know, I, I've got codes and stuff that you can use on Rotolite that will uh, save you money direct through them. But yeah, like um, D Dave has been sensible here and. Uh, Found it, found it elsewhere. Let's have a look. Yeah, nice. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, okay. It's sold out. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Yeah, that that's a that's a chunk of a saving. Yeah, yeah. Nice one, Dave. Nice one. Um, this says, yeah, I definitely missed my rotors when I was constantly filling and moving the old bow strokes back as they got warmer and brighter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's funny what we all we get used to, right? You know, we like we we get used to a certain amount of comfort in our in our tech, and uh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It is it is it is interesting, it's especially with the LEDs being like bright enough now that what you see is what you get, especially with the color as well. Yeah, it's tough, man. Yeah, this says it might sound down, but I hate brighter down with brightness, maybe because I'm an old goth. I mean that definitely that definitely plays a part, Liz. Yeah, <laughs> um, I do know what you mean, though, Liz. I do know what you mean, and and I will say that um, look, I've gone to um, studios and stuff in the past where uh, doing training and that sort of thing for studios and uh, like newborn babies, for example, even like maternity or, or even just re regular people. Right, this light just just blast them in, in the face newborn babies and that sort of thing like you want you want to be shooting at you know what f1.4 like 1.8 right f2 like you want to be shooting wide open get these beautiful baby shots that sort of thing but you can't be blasting you can't be um blasting that baby so if you got like a, even a 500 watt strobe 
and turn it turn it all the way down it's going to be difficult to bring that light in nice and close and shoot wide open so to your point about lights being super bright yes i think i think there are certain cases in studios where i've recommended people buy 200 watt strobes right where where they can or even or even lower like 100 watt strobes and that sort of thing so they can do certain certain things shoot wide open and it not be just you know jarring for the um child and that sort of thing where well, you can say well you can shoot with nd you know nd filters on the lens and that's sort of thing that you can do it becomes very very difficult to focus when the when the modeling bulb isn't bright but the flash is yeah yeah um so yeah i i, I do hear where you're coming from liz yeah yeah this is a big, big question is the electronic diffusion bigger light source for softer light so big diffusion how does the electronic diffuser replicate a bigger light so okay let's let's talk about that then let's talk about that um let's see what we got here is this is this yeah some of the new stuff okay so what they've talking about here and this is um this is i mentioned it in yesterday's post so this image here was shot at a lighting event and like the key key light was an aos2 with this smart softbox that rotolite have um come out with which is this so it goes on the front of your uh aos and then he can go and see with it with it turned turned down so it's smart diffusion means you can dial up and down the diffusion so i don't i don't have one of those but i do have the same technology on the titan here so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna sh show you that like so you, so you can visualize it and then we can sort of um discuss it as it were oh, right let's bring this into shot you can see it here a second So, so at the moment, yeah, this is this is with the smart smart diffusion on a hundred percent. So that's basically frosted the the glass or the or the plastic that's 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 here, right? So uh, the brightness of this X one is at zero point five percent at the moment. Just just to give you some idea. Now I know we're in a you know, controlled environment here, but just to give you some idea, this is at zero point five percent brightness. And at the moment, the diffusion is at a hundred percent. Okay, so I'm just going to turn this. Turn this down, and hopefully, can you see it on there? Yeah, it does, kind of. You might not be able to see it on the screen, but you, but you, you can see the fact that it gets that it gets more diffused less diffused so now obviously with zero percent diffusion you can you can see that we can clearly see the actual leds in there right i'm just trying to look at the screen that you're looking at i'm just seeing if you can so, and, and you can dial so it's not really picking it up but you can, you, I mean, I'm, I'm turning the dial back here but it goes all the way from zero percent all the way up to 100 percent and um it gives you that that frosted diffused look which is um which is which is really cool i mean they um i was at some uh award ceremony with rotolite last month whatever it was and they they they, they won an award for this um smart smart diffusion thing in terms of like the in innovation of the year or tech of the year and that sort of thing so it's really cool i, I mean like it used to be in fancy hotels you would have like the bathroom would be glass and then you'd close the door and then like it would make a contact like the door frame would, would make contact and then the whole like the whole glass bathroom would go frosted right so it's kind of that same tech of like you're, you're passing a charge through this surface that is making it diffused and they've got it to the point where they can you know really just fine-tune it and dial it dial it in right so that's that So that's now available at, by on this um, on this on the ARs twos as the smart smart softbox, and it sits there on the front of the um, ARs like that. 
So Dave says, okay, the big question, the electronic diffusion, bigger light source for softer light, so big diffuser, how does the electronic diffuser replicate replicate a bigger light? So yeah, you're right, Dave, it's not, it's not replicating a bigger light, but it is making it, 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 it is scattering the light. Okay, so without, without the diffusion, it's just like the light is just coming straight out, okay? So it is gonna be a harder, crisper light, and we're gonna get stronger um, shadows and stuff, you know, on, on a key light and that sort of thing. We're definitely gonna get more, more defined shadows, stronger shadows, um, but you're right, it's not changing the size of it in, in, in any way, obviously. Okay, uh, so I think it has its has its has its benefits in terms of being able to dial it in just a just a little bit here. Uh, I suppose I'm trying to trying to work out how often I would I would use it at like twenty percent or seventy percent and that sort of thing. I think it because you can see the difference if you if you're if you're if you've got like a still life or something like that and you've got like products there and you're looking at the hard shadow you can you can see it feathering out so I could see for people who you know uh, wanted to wanted to really dial in like the, like the cleanliness of that shadow just just take the edge off it especially um, on something large like that I could you know I could see it being being viable for sure Sam says I mentioned this last time when I was here Liz but we needed language for distinguishing brightness and being able to compare them properly yeah that's the other thing as well Sam it is it's really really difficult because we are coming into a world here where we're struggling to compare strobe with LED right and the reason for that and you know I kind of I kind of touched on it in a previous uh, article of mine but the reason for that is that like the inverse square law applies to a single point of light okay so for, for most of us we, we're used to comparing speed lights and strobes and that sort of thing like we know in our mind's eye uh, how, how to compare the brightness of these of these lights because you know and the inverse square law applies to a single point point of light so and you double the distance you quarter the amount of light that reaches the subject so that's the kind of the rule and the law that we've lived by since since year dot when, when it comes to ex explaining you know flash so now what happens when we start to bring in leds is that that rule no longer applies because now we don't have a single a single point there right we have this big wall of light that's all emitting the same density or the same brightness same luminance coming out of that okay so that's where the inverse square law falls down dramatically because you can LEDs and panels like this can be can be beautiful like brightness here, but it drops off very very quickly. So, um, to your point, Simon, I completely agree. I think that there is a need for uh, trying to amalgamate them in in, in some way, but I, I I can't see it happening. I did a art of projection workshop with an online workshop with a guy from Boston uh, last week, and like we're going through the projectors. Uh, you know, and they they use luminance, right? They're using luminance, and and again, it's it's a whole other um, way of understanding light. You know, it's like it's bounced like reflected light. What well, you know, and of course that doubles up because you move the projector further away. The screen hasn't moved. The screen's the same size, but it's it's darker. So so there is there is a, so so many variables. Yeah, so many variables. I mean, it would be nice to be able to bring everything all under one one roof, but I can't can't see it happening. Yeah. So I think AI can be a great learning tool. It's good to see how AI can transform their images. Uh, I think AI can be a great learning tool. Yeah. So I agree. I mean, any any visual medium is is or and can be a learning tool. Yeah, I will give you that. I think that it can give people inspiration. Right? They can go off and you know do a do a shoot themselves and that sort of thing. But um, I think for the most part, if you're giving it, giving it the ideas, so that you get a usable image out of the AI, I think you've got a pretty good idea of what you want to begin with. Um, but yes, like for storyboarding and that sort of thing, again, chatting to um, Chris Knight about this, and he uses it for uh, mood boards, right? Storyboards, that sort of stuff. Great, you know, he can he can get his idea across to the client exactly how it's going to look, uh, and you know, very clear, right? 
and the client can, can you, you, you can both agree the client agrees you know you're not trying to you're not trying to communicate using like the, for, for example like even us using our language of light like it's really difficult for us to communicate because we're not always on the same page with the terms that are being used when you the photographer is trying to communicate your idea across to a client very very difficult ai in terms of creating mood boards storyboards great great tool for that for sure yeah 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 um Uh, definitely in my studios too bright brightness of very so many variables yeah I mean yeah exactly when, when you when you start to start to bring in the the ambient light as well yeah yeah thank you Simon yeah thank you Simon yeah uh, you can see that nice yeah nice <laughs> electrochromatic magic mate you want to you want to trademark that that's it I like it I'm liking that already I'm liking that <laughs> <laughs> Electrochromatic magic. I, I don't know. I, I, I need to come up with a product just just for that, just for that branding. Uh, so it's the electronic equivalent of adding an extra layer of diffusion. Exactly, Dave. Yeah. So this is gonna this is gonna remove a stop of light as well. So when you're diffusing it like that, when it's when there's no diffusion at all, it's 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 one stop brighter, right? When you have a hundred percent diffusion, you basically lose lose a stop of light because that light is now being scattered rather than just being punched out. So yeah. So you so you do lose you do lose a little bit of power. Yeah. So it's exactly the same as as having an LED with a softbox off and then with a softbox on it's just real real quick to do yeah um liz said i recently saw a workshop advertised using an image which with declared ai overlays to enhance the outfit the overlays would be provided as part of the workshop not sure feel about that interesting interesting yeah i, I guess you don't have a link to that liz yeah i mean i, I mean i don't it like for, for ads that i see obviously i don't i don't see the um you know, uh, links and that sort. Of, I mean, but we've spoken about it before, where people are now selling prompts, right? So as before, it would be Lightroom presets. Now these guys are selling uh, AI prompts. I <laughs> just like, I mean, it's it's just uh, it's just a book of prompts, which is, <laughs> I know, it's call me old, but I don't know. We're getting we're getting a little bit far from from the truth there now, aren't we? I mean. Lightroom presets at least at least you're learning along the way like you can apply a preset and go oh, that's kind of cool I really like the fact that there's yellow in the highlights there or or like the fact that there's a little bit of noise in the shadow there like at least you can learn from it like at least when you're buying Lightroom presets I, I, I can definitely see that um, but like selling prompts in a book like what this just nuts yeah uh, Simon says, I don't think I can. I just looked at the privacy glass and that's how they described how it works. Really? God damn it. Well, fair play to them. That is cool. Yeah, electrochromatic magic. <laughs> fair play to them. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, nice. Right. Uh, so what was I What was I talking about? So, uh, yeah, in other news, just thought I'd mention that... Um, DP Review. Those of you who don't know, Amazon owns DP Review. They were like, look, it's not, it's not, it's not making billions of dollars a year, so we're just going to close it down. It's not really worth it. Uh, nobody take pictures anymore anyway. It's, everybody does it on their phones. So yeah, we're just going to close down DP Review. So that was supposed to close down, as in just shuttered, just wiped off the face of the earth. That that was supposed to happen last week, a couple of weeks ago, but they did put out a statement saying. Dear readers, we've received a lot of questions about what's next for the site. We hear your concerns about losing the content that has been carefully curated over the years, over the years, and want to assure you that the content will remain available as an archive. So this was a big concern, right? It was like, well, there is, I mean, I think it was decades worth of work of, of reviews and 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 articles and techniques and and, and uh, yeah, it's like competition, just tons and tons of data in there that was just going to be expunged. Uh, so looks like it will now remain as an archive we're, we've also heard that you need more time to access the site so we're going to keep publishing more some more stories while we work on archiving thank you to this community and support you've shown over the years so interesting it doesn't really give us any hard facts or timeline super vague but at least they are looking at the possibility of trying to make sure that 
DP review is is archived, which I think look, I think it would be I think it would be great if it was archived. I think it's a I think it's a huge huge resource, especially seeing as photography. Sure, we have a lot of digital elements, you know, like AI trying to encroach on us now. But for the most part, you know, physics, physics is physics. They have, you know, light is still traveling at the same speed and in a straight line. A lot of these um, past articles are still very relevant, you know. Um, so anyway, I just thought I'd mention that. Uh, I just uh, feel consumers' hair makeup will be actively pushed out. You, you're talking about um, talking about AI, Liz, right? Yeah, I mean, this is this is one of the things, right? Where I could see, I could see a client coming to me, right, and they could go, "Look, Jay, we got this idea for a shoot, and uh, we want to, I don't know, we want to shoot it uh, in the desert, right? And we want to shoot our fashion brand, in, you know, in, in, in the desert, and." Um, Okay, cool. Right. So I would go away. I would I would get them some very rough figures as to how much it would cost to shoot a fashion editorial in a desert, right? And they would go, oh, so what? We we have to you know we either have to source hair and makeup over there. We got to get all the kit. We got to hire the kit. We got to make all the safety. We got to you know it probably take us a, a month, six weeks to make all that happen. And they'd be like, you know. Yeah, it's probably going to cost you twenty-five grand, uh, you know, to make it happen. We're like, well, we've only got we've only got five grand. <laughs> so, what do you do in this instance as a photographer? Do you go, well, yeah, that's what it costs. So, thanks very much, but goodbye. You could potentially go look. I could make the images for five grand for you, but they would be AI generated, right? Like. Look, I'm, I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud here. I'm just, I'm just tr trying to think of somebody's got five grand on the table. Uh, could you, could you potentially use that and, you know, do it, do it, do it with AI? So, I mean, you would still, you would still get the gig. <laughs> like, you're not going to magically get them to somehow find another, you know, fifteen thousand, you know, bucks or whatever it was. Uh, so I knew, I knew somebody was going to say beach. <laughs> you're right Liz you're right you could you could do it on a beach you're right you're right um but yeah like you know I'm just I'm just I was just using this as, as an example but you're right you could you could obviously go look <laughs> if you got five grand let's just let's just go down to uh um Barmouth Beach <laughs> and just and just hope hope that it that it's that it's not not raining um and we'll just pay somebody to retouch out the goosebumps um, but yeah, look, you know, there there are going to be times where where a client has has an idea for a job, and you're like, well, this is how much it's going to cost. Well, I've got the budget for this. Okay, well, I can do that, but it will be AI. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's it. So this is what Dave says. Yeah, take the five k spend five k spend two hundred on an AI prompt preset job done. That's it. It's it's one of those things where you know I'm just I'm just saying to you guys, if if a situation like that comes up. It might be worth, might be worth, you know, uh, I, I would, I would be explicit in the contract and saying my name is to, is not to be anywhere on that, um, you know, that which, which I'm sure they would be fine with. It's just, yeah, I, don't, don't tag me <laughs> in anything. Um, but you know, that's something that you, you would have to morally deal with. Right. And hope you don't get stung by the fine print from the image generator. So Simon brings up a point there about copyright, right? So we're in the we're in the these weird doldrums at the moment where you know Adidas and Coca Cola and are not using AI. I think they would do if if this was fixed, but they're not using it because of copyright. Right? Copyright is is holding them back because, like like Simon's talking about here, is sure you could do the, you could do the gig for them, but you don't really own the images, so they could use the images, but so could everybody else, right? So, um, so th that nobody really owns the images. Like if you ha had a photo, but again, uh, if you were making them very clear, you know, very, if you were making it very clear that that was the case, um, you know, being honest, like who's going to use your images of your clothing and that sort of thing, uh, y y as long as you're being open about it, you could. And the fact that you're going, look, <laughs> you're saving yourself 15 grand. 
sorry that this is you know these are some of the small sacrifices you have to make but yes simon's right you've got to be careful with copyright yeah um so what's going on at the moment is uh, nab over there in las vegas like i said video show is going on over there uh has anybody has anybody been to nab i i've, I've never been it hasn't been something that i've been interested in but as uh, i've been introduced more and more to led lighting recently uh somebody sent me some links um recently very kindly and i was looking at some of the things that they were talking about in nab here and uh yeah kind of kind of interesting you know some of the some of the new new lights coming out again just just to give you some idea in, in terms of pricing and that sort of thing we got um so 600 watt rgb led light here one of the new ones coming out from um from this company i think it's a swedish company maybe yes yeah, swedish brand brand new that sort of thing snazzy snazzy lights they you know they they've been doing some interesting products these are panels as well these, these mini panels just worth worth keeping an eye on them you know interesting design this has actually grown on me at first i was like what on earth is this this has actually grown on me this sort of industrial baroque style uh designing uh, but the, i think the kelvin on these goes from 2000 to like 20,000, which is which is nuts why you would need that but fine you know um and this this uh the, these guys here over at uh news shooter i just i just googled it and the, you know these these guys came up but they, they, they do some very cool uh comparisons with like for like brands and that sort of thing just to give you some idea of where they where they line up and for the pricing and that sort of thing I mean, everybody's got an app one thing that caught my eye though was this with well, this little fella here right so this is the led pretty nuts right uh, the light features kelvin sophisticated six channel rgb acl light engine can can cantastoria cantastoria which produces a full spectrum of colors within the 2000 to 20,000 kelvin range which is actually really impressive right so to have the full rgb spectrum at both 2000 kelvin and 20,000 kelvin pretty impressive okay so but you know very very interesting um led makeup there pretty 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 nuts in fact um so again i'm fairly new to the led world so maybe you guys be like yeah i've been around for ages jake what are you talking about uh but yes yeah, clever the clever the way they that they're, they're merging those colors yeah looks like it should be attached to a tank exactly my thoughts as well like the color as well um yeah, I thought that as well, Dave. Yeah. So you know, total weight twelve kilos. You know, not not light. So interesting again. So S fit, which is Bowen's fit. I just find it bizarre. Like Bowen's, you know, sadly died to death whenever it was, five, six, seven years ago, whenever it was. You know, but the but the S fit lighting modifier attachment is still by far and away the most popular and used lighting attachment um, bracket out there. Uh, I, I, I just I, I do find it kind of interesting that you know Bowen's lives on and it probably will live on for forever more just under the uh, under the guise of this S fit you know interesting. Um, they also have these mag magnetic uh, discs and stuff that go on the front as well, but yeah, kind of interesting. So let's get down to the nitty gritty here. You talk about the uh, so four thousand dollars, right? Or you can if you head down to vegas you can get them for 2700 so just to give you some idea of you know like the pricing of these so this is an s fit 600 watt so you know it sits sits oh, there you go so it, it got some comparisons here so the aperture two and a half uh nan lights apertures yeah okay so but yeah interesting interesting brand coming up with some cool stuff might be might be worth keeping an eye on um obviously nan like we kind of spoken about they're bringing out this beefy 900 uh job here which these aren't s fit as well are they do you guys know if Nanlite are s fit as well it looks like it looks like they might be or very similar yeah yeah um what's the pricing of this fella uh, look at these big kits look 
So I mean, yeah, so five grand for that kit there, but there's 900, 900 watts, whatever it is. So, you know, beefy um, cinema lights there. So this is the thing that um, this, this guy who I've been talking about optical snoots sent me, and he sent me the fact that um, this optical snoot is coming out from a company called Amaran. Now, Amaran is the budget version of Aperture, which is which is kind of kind of interesting. So Aperture, if you guys don't know, make uh, make see great great LED lights, I'm sure, but they are a little bit pricey. So what they've done is is they've you know very, very sensibly, in my opinion, come out and made this other more budget brand that that I presume has very similar tech and quality control to um, Aperture. So they're bringing bringing these out under the Amaran, and and the pricing of these is is excellent. Like pr pricing of some of these is incredible um yeah re really really good decent decent lights as well and again they are s fit um or the non the non panel ones there you go yeah s fit yeah so again you know the bowens bowens brackets so what was interesting is that they announced that they're bringing out this um optical snoot or projection unit coming out next year so the reason I mentioned this is because I have used those of you who follow my work used the optical snoop for years love love the thing you know love what it does very crisp hard light you can use it for gobos um, to create uh, patterns and stuff on the wall so you know we can look at some of the shots here you know um, just gobos that you can use to create some varying effects in your shots right you know pants and that sort of thing so i love using them my, my biggest issue with them is that you use your own lens on the front of them i'm sure a bunch of you have got these op these optical snoots right where you put your own lens on the front there like that now i've found that they heavily vignette the gobo or, or the image and i'm trying to work out how to try and avoid some of that vignetting so whenever i use a gobo it's kind of dark in the corners right and i'm just it's always been a bit of a bit of a pain for me right now can't can't complain you know it's a very um decent decently priced optical snoot you save money by using one of your own lenses on the front everybody's a winner right but the downside is that they can vignette a little bit as well now he was doing some tests this guy and he was saying that rather than using like the strobes that we use or like we were talking a minute ago about the ad 200 right we have that exposed bulb and the 8200 also has the F Fresnel head as well. So what he was finding was rather than using an um, rather than using an exposed bulb when you put it in in there and the light bounces around in there and then, then finally comes out, what he was finding is he was using a Fresnel head on his flash and then using this and that was reduced that was giving him far more power, far far more far more of a brighter. Um, image from the gobo and he was having less vignetting so it's like kind of kind of kind of interesting so i've always been interested in this little fellow here from nanlite right and we can see here super clean optical snoot like no vignetting same brightness throughout extremely clean um edge to edge brightness from 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 this little fella and this uses one of their you know specific uh lenses and stuff at the at the front and again s fit so you can put you know you can you, you can use your own strobe and stuff on that so um yeah so i've kind of been interested in that because they've got their own lens that hopefully doesn't doesn't vignette and i've got the old bowens optical snoot here that has its own lens on it that doesn't vignette anywhere near as heavily either so the downside of this is going to be the zoom right how far can you can you actually you know get a bigger image in a small room so you know um if you're shooting in a, in a home studio can you get the image big enough something like this is going to be throwing probably a smaller image than if you had a 50 mil lens on your optical snoop if you guys are following what i'm saying so um i think these guys for example yeah they, 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 i think these guys are coming with different different lenses right i don't know so i'm not sure what so you got it's 19 degree and 36 degree lens so so they've kind of gone right here where people are coming from with, with this um 
let's let's rather than having a fixed lens we'll give them our own lens but we'll give them like two lenses so they can they can make it work so kind of kind of interesting and i think this one only comes with one lens uh the projection attachment pg 19 comes with a 19 19 degree lens so it is just that one lens so I'm not sure the equivalent of that in in our world like what is a 19 degree lens is that i, I, don't, I don't know what that means yeah I'd need to check, but yeah. So, kind of just um, talking about that now. Uh, just check the questions here before I carry on. Um, looks like I should attach something here. Oh uh, well, that's a lot of color dimensions. Red, green, and that. So yeah, we're talking about that um, chip. Yeah, I'd never seen any LED chip like that, and I can see the benefits of of having um, specific colors there and for them to maintain that brightness. Obviously the downside of having lots of those different colored LEDs is that you lose lose that brightness. But um, they're obviously somehow managing to uh, make it make it work. Yeah, yeah. Um, but fascinating makeup, yeah. Don't know if the wife would be more peed at the price or the weight loss. She, she doubles as my lightness. <laughs> nice, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Simon says shorter, faster lenses deal with the snoop vignetting. I think my 50mm 1.8 hasn't done it, so I noticed. But yeah, the Fresnel head makes a lot of sense, right, Simon? Yeah, so it might be worth um, it might be worth just just keeping that in mind, just because it's it's pushing the light straight out the front, um, so it, it tends to be cleaner kind of light. Now, uh, sort of as an aside of all of this, um, Godox themselves got in touch with me um late last week and they were like hey um not sure if you've heard of us <laughs> uh but uh you know we saw your article on the optical snoot whatever it was and uh, wondered if you'd be interested in in this now some of you may have already have, have seen this um dave you, you said you got the 8200 and that sort of thing so Kodaks make this akr21 which is their sort of mini optical snoot thing right and that goes on the front of their <clears throat> of their heads as well and again they come with different different size lenses so they i mean look i, I get contacted by companies all the time would you try out this this product and that product and you know sometimes i'll say yeah other times it's just like you know it's just, it's it's literally just not worth my time what did kind of catch my eye here was though was um, although very very small and very limited as to what you can put this on, I was kind of interested as to um, how kind of clean the image was, edge edge to edge here. Because when I you know throwing a circle and that sort of thing, I really notice a heavy vignette. Whereas this was fairly clean, um, edge to edge. So I was like, yeah, I mean, send send one over and I'll um, have a look. So they're they're sending that to me. So I, I kind of see see how it comes out. Now at the moment they they have their their sort of um specific slides that they've that they've made for this so you're 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 projecting the images that they've made and they've um and they've kind of made these made these ones to do it but I, i've i've got these e6 slides transparencies that that I've made and I've tried to use in the uh, optical snoots in the past with some success, bar the vignetting. Yeah, so um, so I'm interested to see how these ones come out. Maybe I can shoehorn in my my own slides in there. So um, I was like, great, yes, send it over. I don't have anything to use it in, so they're going to send me one of, one of these as well, the eighty one hundreds. So one hundred watts. So very low powered, um, but we shall see. We shall, we shall see how it stands up. Yeah, see how it stands up. I'm I'm kind of concerned a little bit because it's got a 100 watts is is low and it's got to be thrown through one of these as well. We'll see what kind of figures we get in, in, in terms of brightness. But um, when I when I get it and I've tested it, I'll let you guys know. Yeah. Um, Liz says you totally just bought one of these. Oh, you, you bought one of these AKR twenty ones. Interesting. Okay, what are you using it? What are you going to use it on, Liz? Are you using it on the eighty two hundreds, or are you using it on the on the eighty one hundred things here? 
Uh, Edward says, I just scratched the inside of my snoot's glass with the underside of my gobo holder. And now when I focus the lens to be at its sharpest, it casts a dirty grain on those shit. I keep the lens at the blurriest to avoid that. God, that's annoying, man. Yeah, so he just scratched the ground glass inside. Interesting. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I could see how that would definitely ruin it. Yeah, damn it. Uh, Liz says, and the full slide set, hoping to make my own slides. Exactly, Liz, exactly, yeah. It took the words right out of my mouth. It's exactly what I'm um, looking to do. So, yeah, if you if you learn anything, if you learn any hacks, then let me know. I don't think they, they want me to do that, <laughs> but I'm going to do it anyway because... Uh, because having just just their slides is 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 not ideal but in theory look you can see this holder here um i can't see any reason why you shouldn't be able to put your own slides in i've even done i've even used acetate and letraset i know those of you under the age of 35 in chat here have no idea what i mean by letraset but um letraset is uh, essentially letters that you transfer from greaseproof paper onto something else is what we used to use years ago so i've actually been able to create gobos on uh, acetate using letters you can still buy acetate fairly cheaply on amazon or ebay and that sort of stuff so you can get some cool, cool effects liz so it might be worth having a play with that yeah um use the 80 100 it's surprisingly useful even outside and shade of course really okay dave okay Wow, interesting. All right, yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll certainly use it. I, I've always been interested to, um, always, always been interested to see, see how this this little fella stands up. And you're right, Liz. It is is pretty cute. I mean, that thing is. Um, I think it shows somebody holding it here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, it's nuts, right? Um, it's great. Yeah, great. High speed sync up to eight thousandths of a second interesting yeah see how, see how it goes um you can pretend you made me buy it for pr points oh yes absolutely yeah i'm gonna put you down as a um testimonial as we speak yeah <laughs> uh acetate works well with alcohol ink as well if you want to play with colors interesting okay yeah i could see that yeah i could see that yeah yeah how do you does it how does it actually dry on there on there um simon does it does it leave any um, is it fairly clean? I've not heard of alcohol ink. I have to look at that. Yeah. It's basically Coke can size. Yeah, true. Yeah, true. That's, that's exactly what it is. You're right, Dave. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, interesting. They've said they posted it. As soon as I get it, I'll have a look. Um, but yeah, Liz, where did you get yours from? Did you get yours from Pixar Pro or Amazon or something like that? Where did you get it from? Uh, but yeah. See, see, see how bright it is. See if you can use it. I mean, that's um, that's that's big words, though, Dave. To say that you've used it outside, shade or not, still outside is, yeah, that's, yeah, good. Okay. Yeah. Right. Hmm. Okay. But yeah, if anybody saw anything or sees anything, uh, you know, announced or released at NAB, then let me know. Like I said, I I've only just recently looked at it but yeah, I'd be um inter interesting times right we haven't we have the film world and the stills world getting getting closer and closer together and you know gels you know like actually making gels and selling gels is is um trickier than it's than, than it's ever been just because companies don't really want the bother of making them especially for photographers where they're just like small sheets you know if, if you want to go to um you know Roger Deakins, who who went through like fifty rolls of CTO gels um, shooting Blade Runner, then sure they'll 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 make that sort of money all day every day. But for us, our still shooters, they you know they're really really not bothered. And so LED with the colors and stuff coming from them, yeah, that 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 gel market is only going to get smaller. I think, yeah, sadly. So buy gels now, guys. You know. <laughs> Uh, I got it on deal, nice Liz. Yeah, do you mind me asking how much you pay for it? How, how much? How much are these? Dave says anything that puts me off about the eighty one hundred is the round head, and the price is too close to the eighty two hundred. So what's wrong with the round head, then, Dave? Is isn't that a benefit? Is it? You mean because the the bulb is is sort of recessed and not, um, and not exposed? Is that what you mean? 
Edward says he still has the JKX jail set from 2016. Whew, mate, they are vintage. You hang on to those, mate. They'll be worth something. You hang on to those. <laughs> Absolute. I know who the real ones are, Edward. Don't worry. Don't worry. I know who the, you know, the real photographers in the room are. It's all good. Um, yeah, yeah, right. Uh, now that we've ostracized everybody apart from the absolute uber nerds, um, we can we can probably <laughs> probably look at some images in these in these last five minutes. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, but yeah, any any questions about anything we've spoken about? And let me know. It's actually starting to warm up in here now with all these lights on. I actually, like it. Um, right, Michael's probably gone for a tent for his tea so we, we, we probably lost him but or Mikael I apologize I'm still playing with <clears throat> multicolor LED frame set up with my key and model lamp cool okay so this is um so this is what we were talking about earlier on when Michael first joined lose my voice you guys were making me talk too much <clears throat> so this is what we we're talking about um earlier on Michael said he just sold his automotive business but he was you know doing car modifications and that sort of thing and he had a lot of uh led strips so what he what he did was he made his own his own um led sort of doorway if you like and what he's what he's got is um so he had this these led strips that would that he made on this frame right and we can see here we can see the blue this nice real even blue all the way around the outside now this is what's really interesting and this is what i found about the led tubes is that i'm um, again going back to the inverse square law about having to spread are oh, you still here michael nice about having to spread the um light over a um, over a larger area LED, led tubes are great for that now what mikhail's got set up here is really cool because he's got this real even spread of light because he's got LEDs um, you know I don't know how many he's got in here but it's, it's probably hundreds right it's probably got these hundreds and they're all emitting the same little amount of light yeah so the benefit of this you've got all these hundreds of LEDs right the benefit of this is that you you know you compare that to trying to do that with a strobe right so most people you know, they come in and go oh yeah cool i've got this cool strip softbox yeah i'm gonna have my strip softbox or even worse they position their strip softbox um like that and they have their strobe here and they you know and here right so what happens is that all this light is coming from this central point so here is going to be real bright and then down here and here is going to be less bright you know sometimes up, upwards of half a stop so what you end up with is this uneven lighting okay so first off, this is why I use umbrellas. Don't use strip or grid softboxes to do this sort of thing. I know everybody does it. Everybody keeps sending me images. <laughs> and they're like, no, I bought these expensive gridded softboxes. I'm going to use them. Don't. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so this is the problem that we come across with as, as strobists, right? We have this centralized point of light, and it results in uneven lighting. The beauty of what Mikhail's got set up here. I am actually going to Google how to pronounce your name after this stream, I promise. <laughs> uh, so what, 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 what he's got here is even lighting, right? Because he's got hundreds of little lights doing, doing a little bit of light and then giving us this beautiful even tone. None of these colors are blown out, right? How, how often do we see gelled images su submitted in here where the gels are being blown out, right? Mikael. Thank you, nailed it. Clearly, I, I, I knew I had it. Um, thank you, Mikael. Uh, so you get images sub submitted here all the time, right, where the color is, is overexposed and blown out because they're using like a softbox or something like that, where it's too bright in the middle. This is beautiful because we have this beautiful, even strip of light all the way around and no blown out colors, nice, consistent color all the way around. Really, really good job. Um, this is a very low resolution image here, so I'm not sure of the exposure. I, I felt like there was maybe some some movement here. Am I, is, is that right, Mikael? Have you got like some movement in, in the model here? Is she moving because the LEDs are so dim or not sure? Um, but yeah, really beautiful shot. And um, I also want you guys to, you know, look at 
the beautiful sculpting on the face here. Okay, so look at this. So we have this nice highlight here. And then we have this section of nice shadow section here, right? And then it goes off into, into light here again, which is the color, right? Beautiful, beautiful, okay? So the placement that Mikael's got the lights here is bang on, yeah. Beautiful sculpting of light, beautiful highlight on the skin here, drops off beautifully into shadow before the color comes in. Yeah, excellent work, mate, really well done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Facebook number, okay, cool, yeah, no worries, Mikael, yeah. I, th I thought, yeah, no worries, and I know it's a lot, low res image but yeah really well done on this man yeah really cool and um you know thank you for uh, sharing your process with, you know as, as well i know um some people watching the stream may have may have missed it in the past but yeah you know building that frame that they're standing in i think is well worth it i, I think yeah i think you've got an excellent piece of kit hopefully you you kept that from the garage right hopefully you haven't got got rid of that so i think it's a really cool um diy lighting setup that you've got there which i think produces great great results yeah 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 nicely done uh just one thing on this i would just if possible in post or you know ideally in camera but we we don't want it to, to drip drift off into um drift off into pure black here what can happen you see i, I like the fact that we've got it dark blue up here but sh but the black areas on her stand out from the image as soon as we have black areas in the background our eyes get confused about depth okay so just just to try and try and make sure that we have a little bit you know even if it's you know deep dark blue there um even if we have that I'll just show you what I mean in case it's not immediately obvious. Look at these new images I got to share. Eh? They're, they're coming out really cool. Um, so just real quick, I'll show you what I mean. Really? That's the select subject you came up with, Adobe. Do you want to try again? <laughs> Hell, the Photoshop should have a stroke then. Uh, okay, so just real quick then, I just I just want to show you what I mean. I'm just going to go with that. It's fine. Uh, so here we've got the. I have to move this microphone. It's right in front of the keyboard. So here we got the the model. We're just going to invert that. We want the background. And here, what I'm going to do is I'm just go down to the blue channel and just bring up the like the blacks down here a touch. So what I'm trying to do is, you know, you guys can't see that down there, but yeah, so, 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 so down here, down here where it was just pure black before and then I'm just trying to bring bring that to, to blue rather than pure black because we have pure black in her so we don't want the image to lose its depth okay so just uh, something to watch out for uh, so uh, um, I skip over your comments today Simon no, I didn't did I I did something. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Yeah, instantly. I was using alcohol markers. They aren't wonderfully clean, but if a little out focus is fine. <laughs> I, I had I had missed that, Simon. Sorry. For, thank you for reminding me. Yeah. Okay. So using the markers. Gotcha. I'm, for some, I was thinking you were paint. The I know what you mean now. Okay. That that would that would be yeah that would be ideal because that's translucent and you've got fine fine movement on, on the acetate yeah that makes yeah okay fine control on the acetate okay that makes sense that makes sense yeah um <laughs> it's keep me on my toes man uh so this says the slide set is 50 quid the snoo 80 quid really but the strobe 175 okay had been okay okay I mean, still was 80 quid. I mean, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, that's, that's, that's a pretty good deal then. Pretty good deal, yeah, yeah. Nice. Um, 
Dave says, the fittings I have are all S-Fit and always look at Flash with the thought I'd rather have power I don't need uh, power I don't need than need power. Okay, so it's always better to have more power and turn it down. I agree, yeah. Uh, I don't have, so we'll take the 8200 over the 100 at a similar price. Yes, I can totally see that, Dave. Yeah, and I, and I would and I would agree with you, yeah. Um, I'm not too sure at who that 100 is marketed at. I would need to look at it. Yeah, I would, I would, I would need to look at who that's marketed at because I don't even think, has it got a modeling bulb, right? I don't think it has. I think when I was watching the video of them of them trying to focus this, you, you can see the flash firing. So I don't even think it's got a modeling bulb. I could be wrong, but um, Liz, does it have a modeling bulb? Yeah, don't know. Because Mikhail says, been having to Photoshop the background a lot. Yeah, yeah, it can be annoying, but you know, if, if you, if, Okay, put it like this. You either do a, you either do the photo shoot in the space that you have, home studio or whatever, and you have to Photoshop the background, fine. Or you don't do the photo shoot because you can't afford a bigger studio. Yeah, it's it's better to Photoshop the background. Look, I'd always urge people to get it right in camera, but if it means you've got to Photoshop the background, but you but you actually do a shoot, then cool. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Hey Darren, hey Darren, man. Check the new image. The Jordan looks so good. Thank you. Yeah, it was at the um, recent Rotolite event. Yeah. Oh, that's the one you couldn't you couldn't make. <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> um. <laughs> but thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. Simon says oh, other ways of using them are available, which is why I said ink, calligraphy pens, or brushes might work as well. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. I need to play with it. I think it's like something something out of focus. I think for something that's going to be in focus, I, I love the letter set for how clean it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 8100 has an 80. Oh, it does have a modding bulb. Okay, nice. Okay, cool. Nelson says, hey, Nelson, how you doing? How have you work? What background color should work better for gels, LED, etc., or this type of image? For, for this one here, Nelson, what background color should work better for gels, LED, etc.? for this type of image. Um, tricky. I think I think what Mikhail has done here is is good and is probably probably works works well um, for for you know for my images for example I use a dark gray background. Right, so this is a dark gray background. This is not a black background, dark gray. Okay, so um, that means that we don't get this pure, like the, like the background falling off into pure black, which is what I mentioned in Photoshop a minute ago. So yeah, shooting against a dark, dark gray background and then kind of allowing the lights that you have in the room, i.e. the teal um, key light here, the only thing that's lighting this dark gray background is my teal kill light. Is key, key light is falling onto that background behind her and just giving a little bit of illumination. So, a lot of people will use a pure black background. That's where you can get into trouble. Because can you imagine trying to shoot this on a black background like this? Like this is the worst fabric to try and light properly. Um, just because it just doesn't reflect light very very well. It just is very fine mesh like this. Um, like stocking material is, you know, super fine mesh. So very, very difficult to illuminate properly. So having that dark gray background back there helps to um, keep keep them off the background. Uh, you use black. Hey, look, most people do. Yeah, most people do use black. It's absolutely fine. Uh, it's just, I, I think you'll find it easier in the long run to maybe, you know, just, just use um, just use a dark gray so that it, it kind of helps to bed the actual uh, image in, into the scene a little bit more. Where are we? Here we are. Yeah. So like here, for example, you wouldn't have had it go, go to black here. It just would have been dark blue. Problem solved. Right. So 
Yeah. So I'm not sure if that answers your question, Nelson, but that's what I do. Um, if I'm adding gels, if I'm adding color gels to a, to a background, I would always use a white background. I would never add, uh, I would never use a gray background, which is what some YouTubers will tell you is to use gels against a gray background. Never do that. Always want to make sure it's a white background, right? Um, the reason for that is that maybe you're using a yellow gel on a, on a background, right? And you've got a gray backdrop. You can't use a yellow gel on a gray background. It just, it's just, it just, it's just, it just doesn't work. Yeah. Try and try and liken gelled lighting to watercolor painting, right? You wouldn't like, like a watercolorist wouldn't use a gray piece of paper. Right, they would use a white piece of paper and apply these colors to it. Um, so, so yeah, that's yeah. If, if you if you just want to be doing colored gels, to, you know, to look vibrant, then yeah. Uh, I'll just try and find you an example here. Um, like I mean here, so yeah, so like pale pale pastel pink color yeah this is a white backdrop you I would never use gray there right uh, what else here as well right so we got these nice you know orangey yellow colors I would never use gray here because like here it would it would just be you know so always use white if you're trying to actually color color gel a background Uh, Thunder Grey is my favorite. Yeah, is, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Dave. Okay. <laughs> is Dave just trying to imply that I'm old and don't, don't know how to use Google? It's crazy. Uh, what's on the shopping list, Liz? The grey grey background, or a grey window blind, which is what I use if I'm on on location. Yeah. So these that that shot that I showed you there is a window blind this is a window blind so you can get these for like 30 quid that that, that is a window blind yeah it's great because they just roll up dead dead flat on location you move it like it's great yeah yeah so um and again you can get window blinds on on amazon for you know 20 20 30 quid just get the biggest ones you can you can find um you know dark gray job done yeah yeah See, see, look. Obviously, you know, posh people got a little bit of money to throw about They're using using their IKEA window blinds. But you know, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you you can tell you you can tell David's been following me for a while, right? What's he got? What's this? Top fan. He's earned two badges. Oh, mate, look at this. Look at look at these badges. Four years. What a legend. Eh? Uh. But it might now be a window. Exactly, yeah. yeah. The other thing with window blinds is that you can buy a bunch of them in, in different colors. It's not going to cost you the earth, right? So I, I've got some you know, red ones and, and blue ones and that sort of thing. If you just want something simple in the background, not going to cost you too much. Yeah. Anyway, I can't believe we got off, off topic. So, so rare for me. Um, so Simon's got an image here. Uh, so you're talking about the dialable diffusion. Yeah, this one's a shot from my granddad's old cameras. One he got secondhand in the 50s and been sitting sitting as an ornament since it failed sometime. Since it failed sometime in the last four years, it's not doing too badly for a 90 year old though. True. Although the shot isn't exactly showing off the Kodak. So um, I saw this and I was like, how? Uh, oh, the negative has been printed back to front. Um, so I asked him how this is. Wow, man! Yes, yeah, so that's a uh, twin lens reflex. Is there a, is there a brand on that? Is that Roddy Flex? Looks looks like it could be Roddy Flex, right? Yeah, it, it would it would have made the um, OG one. Yeah, nice. Uh, oh, Ico Flex Mark II. You even put it in there. I, I apologize. That's what I get for not not reading your comments, Simon. Uh, definitely thirties vintage. Had to get into the into the lens to be very careful. 
bend a bird pull back into shape so it would time the shutter properly oh fair play for fixing it though man that's awesome yeah yeah um yeah i um i certainly use the old film cameras from time to time as you guys know i shoot you know i've, sh I've shot a bunch of um f film stuff uh not not a million not a million years ago uh I can't, I can't think now, but yeah, I, I shoot a bunch of the old film stuff and, um, it's, uh, it is a lot of fun, a lot of fun shooting that. You like, you slow down, you're thinking about what, you know, cause every shot costs you money. Uh, you're not going to, you're not gonna be able to see, see the shot again. So, so yeah, um, for, for, for ages. So yeah, like shoot, shooting film is something I would recommend everybody do. Yeah. What film is that then? Is that is th like how old is that picture then, Simon? Did you take this recently and then processed it? Kodak Gold, yeah, nice colours, yeah. <laughs> uh, like a flex, yeah, sorry, yeah. Darren's a damn cool light painter too. He is Dave, yeah, that's right. I think that's how I met Darren originally. And I, I when I released my. Um, long exposure and light painting workshop and um darren came along to that and yeah he's yeah he's darren's done some some really cool long exposure stuff yeah really cool yeah took that the other day developed it on sunday <clears throat> gotcha nice are you doing your own deving as well fair play fair play god oh, takes me back right david webb one of our one of our newest members uh <laughs> Finally get to submit something, one light midday sun, clouds as a modifier, fighting the wind blowing in the wrong direction for how I wanted the sun to light her, and the clouds rolling in and out. Had no choice but to run and hide in the truck when the sun disappeared and run back. Okay, okay. Cool shot though, Dave. Yeah, really nice shot. Yeah, really, really cool. Yeah. Um, I appreciate it. it's you know difficult to uh screw up a daylight shot but still it's a nice shot i know you were trying to make it sound like it was you were really fighting fighting to make it work out here in, in daylight but um <laughs> i'm sure it was i'm i'm only i'm only ripping on david because he does some beautiful um indoor studio lighting setups and obviously you just go outside and point them in, in the right direction job done but yeah this is um a yeah, really nice shot really nice shot yeah uh let's have a look so David's gone for a color grade on this already, right? We, we can all see that he's got this, you know, color grade, kind of a, you know, almost like a vintage grade on this, you know, like, like sort of warm, warm, milky, yellowy, greeny highlights. It's, you know, it's fairly, fairly on trend at the minute, David, you know, um, so yeah, absolutely love, love the grade that, he, that he's got. I'm just, I'm just going to, play around here a second and just and just see um i may actually just in terms of a liquefy just go and see whether where the bra is crushing the boob there i would probably just pop that out so it's more of a curve in there um but yeah let's um let's just have a quick quick play here So those of you who don't know, I'm just using the channel mixer to do the um, color grades, and you can do them all in all in one. But I do tend to just try and do them separately. Um, just so I can turn them on and off at the end and see what's working, see what's not working. So I'm just trying to bring out some of the some of the colours that we've got here already. So again, this is not about me saying that David's done anything wrong. David's applied a you know beautiful colour grade to it. I'm just uh, I'm just showing you guys an alternative. Ooh, I do like that though, David. Yeah, no, I take it all back. Yeah, this is this is definitely better. Um, 
only, I'm only one you want. Uh, so yeah, this is, this is just um, a little bit different in terms of the grade, just cleaning up some of the tones on the um, jacket there, punching up some of the um, some of the blues in the in the sky there behind. And obviously the main feature here is going to be the uh, lingerie, just really making that really making that pop, you know. So, yeah. There you go. 30 seconds, job done. I'll give you my PayPal link, mate. No worries. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's have a look. Now it says here, yeah, thanks, Dave. And you've been doing some cool stuff with the lights too. Nice. Look at these fellow light painting brethren in chat. Uh, Liz says two blinds purchased dark grey and white will give it a bash <laughs> nice <laughs> somebody take that woman's credit card away it's like <laughs> I mean that's yeah I mean you like can't can't go wrong with that you I mean you are you you are a no messing around kind of um, purchaser I, re I respect that I would be I'm in an iron I'd be going to eBay Amazon Dunelm I'd be checking out the prices of blinds hats off to you Liz you no nonsense get it done in the basket bought love it yeah i would oh yeah i would have taken me days to make that sort of informed decision <laughs> oh you are here david uh, i was actually debating him oh shit um i didn't mean anything i just said by the way i thought you i, I didn't think you were here mate um i was actually debating a more blue red palette yeah i mean like, like i said david yeah it's just just different right and I, I know you've done that sort of you know that sort of um warmer warmer red palette in in the past but yeah just i'm, I'm just, just having a play with it Keith's got an image here, so uh, uh, so this one had a bit more Photoshop than I would have liked. I used the Westcott optical spot with 35mm lens on an AD600. Okay, so you got 600 watt, watt head, they're nice. Above, pointed down slightly, and second light 8400 on a floor stand with a reflector dish and teal gel pointed down towards a silver foldable reflected, reflect, reflector about five or six feet to the left. AD 400 was at uh, what, quarter power, something like that, or 101, yeah, that, that figure. <laughs> very, very little power. Uh, and the optical spot on a light with more power output was at about 164th. Uh, I don't own a light meter to compare the actual power output, but was about, but that was about where I landed. I still had a really noticeable blue cast that wasn't completely washed out by the spot though. In the Photoshop, I targeted areas I wanted to be white and desaturated. Then with a good amount, but I feel like it might have been possible to do a better job in camera. Perhaps it's due to where I positioned the gel since there is a bit of blue light leak on the top. Okay. Look, Keith, bottom line, final image looks, looks great. Okay. So, you know, apart from us nerds in here, we don't, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter too much how, how we got there as long as the final image is looking great job done and the final image is looking great so as far as i understand it here um what he's doing is he's got his background here and then obviously he's got the the model and then he's got his uh he's got his light coming straight down and then to my knowledge, what he's got is he's got a silver reflector on the floor here. And then he's got a blue gel fired into that that's then lighting the shadows here, right? And this is a very old um, lighting setup that I shared many, many years ago and difficult one to pull off. And I, I would say that for a very difficult lighting setup to pull off, I think, you know, I think you've done a great job. Um, shadows look look clean you got some you know you got some decent color in there skin looks good here on the model even exposure on the model which is one thing that's very easy to screw up so yeah i think you know i think bottom line you've done done a great job one thing that you could try alternatively rather than rather than this is to have like a big uh, massive softbox right so rather than rather than bouncing it off the floor you could try and get away with um swapping this out from from massive like the bigger the better kind of big big softbox uh, with with the blue gel in there so that's gonna that's gonna create the light and then this 
uh, optical snoo is, is gonna is gonna carve out that shadow so that could be an alternative but <clears throat> like i said bottom line doesn't really matter how how you got there at the end of the day uh shot looks great job done yeah so um yeah really nice really nice um but i respect the fact that you're going look i feel feel like i've could have done better in camera how do i do that so yeah I, that that would, be, that would be my advice swap that out for a um uh yeah for a big big soft box yeah i'm just gonna real quick uh see technique i'm sure Oh, did I see it then, actually? Here you go. I think, yeah, I think it's, <clears throat> this is what, yeah, so this is, this is old, old, yeah. So it's kind of, kind of the process there. So you see you've got the reflectors on the, on the floor and then bounced up to get these, to get these, um, colored, colored shadows. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder how old that is. I, I, I guess I could probably, probably find out. But anyway, yeah, cool. Uh, Rod's uh, Rod's going top turn up to tell us about the pro light slot. Oh, gotcha. Uh, too late. Uh, this is, I am in the third year of an ultra house refurb. Jesus, I know the cost of everything all at once. I have some leftover fabric that will become backdrop soon. Upholstery fabric sometimes conveniently comes with its own carpet roll. True. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, nice, Liz. Yeah, yeah, like it. Right. Uh, so yeah, thanks for posting that one, Keith. Yeah, really cool. Yeah, blast from the past to hear about that technique as well. Uh, so Sam here, shot on Sunday. Used my D850 and my Nifty 50 alongside a Godox 400 Pro and a small pop-up beauty dish uh, to give the shot some drama. Nice using the pop-up beauty dish. Yeah, it's been a while since I've used mine. I've got one. Uh, I got one up there somewhere. Yeah, I bought that in Hong Kong thirty years ago, damn near ten years ago. Um, but it it does, yeah, it does wonders. Yeah, if, if you guys are out out on location, and um, you use the soft boxes and that sort of thing, and you're doing portraits, honestly, check out pop up beauty dishes. Really, really good. Really, really good. Um, so Sam's got a shot here. Let's have a look. Let's bring this in. Oh, look at the color grade on that. Oh, that's nice. Uh, <laughs> Let's have a look. Let's get this in here. So, um, just straight, straight off the bat, looking at this, one of the things that sort of grabbed my attention was these these bright areas here, um, and kind of kind of losing our subject in there. You know, naturally, our eyes are drawn to the brightest part of an image first. Okay, so you just got to be wary of elements like this, especially when they're fairly large in the shot. So. Um, what I'm going to just going to try and do is I'm just going to try and tone this down and just knock these back a little bit. Uh, one thing we can do is just create a curve and then come up to image, apply image, and then just make sure that we've got you know everything selected here and just make sure that, that this is unchecked. Click that. What we end up with is a mask made out like a luminance mask, a brightness mask. So essentially. This is a mask and the bright area, the white areas here are what's going to be affected by what we're going to do in here. So, for example, we can we can bring this bring this down a little bit to try and knock out some of these. Uh, knock out some of these bright bits. OK, so we've obviously gone too much there. So what we can do is we can put this in a group now when with this with this uh curves in a group we can now apply more masks to it so here i can apply another mask so now okay look darken down the face too much we can come in here and make sure that we're not we're not covering the face right that kind of actually works pretty well uh, just seeing yeah yeah. alternatively we can kind of double down on that so I'm going to just command J just to duplicate that let's get rid of this mask so we've still got this going on in here what we can do is we can kind of do the opposite so we can mask this all out 
And then we can take this, um, this sort of reflected mask here. So now this is in, this is in the, the mask of that group, right? So now we've just darkened down these, these, these edges. I think it's too much on this particular one. We can we can come in. Come in a little bit. As soon as you start to darken darken something down like this, bear in mind that it will affect the color. So there's a couple of things that you can do. You can kind of uh, do it by eye. Um, one thing you could try is changing the blend mode of the actual curves layer to luminosity. So really that should only affect the, the actual luminance of the image and not affect the colors. But if it's still not not really um, not really working for you, you can come in and manually manually adjust the uh, colors in, in this as well. Okay, so so far, what have we done? So we've darkened it down, but and we've kept her out of the middle there. And then this is taking it another step further. You don't have to do both of these. You can do one or the other, but you know, already, you know, look at look at where your eyes are going in this image, right? Very very bright on the outside. Now we're kind of being brought brought straight into the into the middle there, where this where this brightest area is. Um, so let's carry on let's do a little bit of a grade here I, this is this is fine i'm just not a huge fan of this greeny yellow kind of concrete um so i'm just gonna just have a little bit of a play with some of the colors here just warm up some of these some of these shadows a little bit she, I mean, she's also got this really bright vibrant hair so i think we can afford to lean into having you know some more warmth in the image as it were so in the green curve here, the opposite of green is going to be magenta. <clears throat> just bringing this down. If you're not sure as well, don't forget, just grab the hand tool and you know just, you can just come in here and go boom and then just drag down. Like that, I don't want to go too far. Um, and the blue, we can be careful with here, but I think we could afford to just bring everything together with just taking out a little bit of the blue in the shadows come more of that yellowy color okay so we just tightened up the colors a little bit there now we can come into the final color grade with the channel mixer let's uh let's see where we want to, where do we want to take this so again leaning into these leaning into these reds a little bit I'm kind of into that. She's like red's really popping now, and we've kind of got that nice contrast between the red and the and the sort of the teal going on here. Um, you could, you know, you could you could finish it off here with a little bit of a, a little bit of a grade in terms of bringing up some of those shadows. So some of those darker areas, I'm just using this exposure here to bring up the, the black point. Okay, so again, it's just gonna soften out some of this foreground element here that is, is a little bit heavy in terms of like when it's off, you see it's just jet black, it can, can, be, can draw our attention too much. So I'm just gonna knock that back a little bit. And then do you know what? Lastly, I am just gonna come in and Just brighten up that center. Yeah. So just to just to make it yeah, to be sure. So it's where we were before. So you can see like the like the brightness areas down down here and these and these edges here, and she's kind of being being, being lost in the center there a little bit. So you know, knock knock these highlights back knock them back even even further um, just applying a little bit of a 
uh, grade here to try and tighten up some of these colors to bring them all all into the same color palette um, and then a final grade just to actually make everything make everything pop a little bit like that so just just trying to bring everything together the other thing as well is what I kind of like what's what's happened here is you see we've lost some of the contrast here in, in some of this graffiti and that sort of thing which is a good thing because it means that the contrast of her is even more pronounced so um, I actually kind of re really like that yeah yeah that's cool that's cool um, okay uh, so we've got we've got Sterling's one here so how do you shot number of lights shot with a number of lights and a laser shooting from behind her which illuminates the hair okay okay this is the before oh shit Sterling <laughs> clever idea with the um, flooring though if you're still here Sterling what is what is this floor is it like vinyl or something interesting yeah um, I mean at least you tried to make make a backdrop that, that, that you could um, Photoshop out. Have you got some smoke and stuff going on here as well? That's cool. That was cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then the final result. I, yeah, I, I think you get away with that. We got some textures and stuff here. We got um, looks like we've got you know rather than it just being a plain flat flat background. Yeah, I think it, I think it works. I think it works for sure. Mylar, nice, really nice. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's cool. I like, I like what you've done with this um, texture in here. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. <clears throat> Somehow believable as well. It actually looks like it's paint coming out or something like that. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Most of the smoke dead in a post. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't think you've gone I don't think you've gone over the top. I mean I can see that it's hazy here. It feels like we've got um you know, it's 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 like the the shadows are very knocked back, so it already feels like it's fairly hazy to begin with. I think for the most part you get away with it. Yeah, it's nice. It's cool. I do kind of like the idea of I mean, I don't shoot full body for obvious reasons. It's just a nightmare. Um, but the I do kind of like the idea of you using this this floor to add almost a little bit of interest. Because if you can imagine that that was that was all this like sort of white color, it would just look like she's floating. But you know, having having that mylar there adds that little bit of something that actually beds them into an environment rather than it just being rather than just floating. I think it's cool. Yeah, I think it's cool. Yeah, good job. Yeah. So what you, you mentioned here, um, shot number of lights and a laser shooting from behind. What, what is that? A laser? What it like? Just a um, like a projector or like a laser pointer sort of thing? What is what is that? Uh, so Tony got shot here experimenting with continuous light and strobe. I used the modeling lamp with the yellow gel to capture the movement okay so tony's always playing with new ideas always always testing things out which is great always a pleasure to see what he's working on next so what he's doing here is he is mixing continuous light and strobe so he's saying we've got the yellow gel is on the modeling lamp and um his strobe is kind of capturing capturing this lady here as well so i'm kind of thinking then that what he's got going on is he's got the arms with the arms doing doing the movement right because that's what they're that's what this catching so he's bought this outfit here this super shiny outfit i mean but look at those beautiful streaks though if darren's still in in chat i mean he's you know that's that's some clean that's some clean um light trails beautiful that's a, that's a great outfit for that really really clean um clean movement there very cool so yeah the issue now is just trying to uh get the get the flash on on the face in or limit the amount of ambient light on the face so flash the face and then yeah flash the face and then keep the ambient off the face so that we're not getting that that blurring as well <clears throat> which could be possible could be possible might, might be a little bit tricky if you're trying to get it all over but i mean one alternative may be to have her face pointed away from that heavy yellow light on that side so that because it looks like it's maybe the blue flash i'm not sure though um so that that could be an alternative to have her her face pointing away from the from the ambient light that would probably help yeah but really cool yeah really cool 
such such clean lines as well in, in terms of that movement. Uh, it's one of those things you buy for parties. Oh, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so like in in a, in, a, in a smoky room, it kind of um, yeah creates those creates those rays and stuff. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Annie says here that she ordered the smart softbox we, that we were talking about earlier on. You know the um, smart softbox, which is cool. I'd be interested to see how she um, get gets on with that. I think she was she was just saying here that she tried to use my discount code more, more than once and it wasn't working. I need to speak to Rotolite about that. I wasn't aware that it was only one one use. So I will I will have a look at that. Yeah, yeah. So I thought you could use it multiple times. Um, and then lastly, Annie's sharing this image here. No new shoots for me. Pretty soon I'll have to relearn everything you taught me. Been sending proposals to organizations, have a big lead. And I sure that and I sure hope they will go ahead with it. If they do, it'll be a big game changer game changer all around. And if I do, you will know as I've learned so much through your free advice and we'll be sending you some monies to show my appreciation. <laughs> you don't have to do that, that's fine. Here's a sneak peek at my project that pretty much gives it away. <laughs> Okay, okay. So um, working with the horses again. Uh, if, yeah, if you uh, really... Um, who used it twice? Okay. <laughs> there must have been... I will I will follow that up, Annie, on, on that code. Yeah, because it should, it should work. But um, unless they've just, just pulled it in general for whatever reason, it's a time thing. But I will um, bring it up. Uh, yeah, Annie, honestly, you know, sending you... Uh, all the good vibes for this gig because uh, I'm, I'm, if it's if it's anything to do with what what we're seeing here i know it's something you're super passionate about which would be amazing yeah to not only get a really cool gig but you know working on a gig that you're super passionate about would be amazing yeah so i really wish you all, all the best with that um and this is really this is really cool as well seeing as you're here any i'll I, i'll ask so this is is this all captured in camera or have you added this sort of movement in in post as well uh, either way, it works really well. You know, I actually kind of like the fact that it feels like there's some movement in the image with this um, with this blurred blurred background, especially with the colours as well. Difficult. You got this white. You got you got you know white uh, horse, and then you know grey or snowy background behind. Like how do you add that separation? So sometimes you know I think this this effect that, that we have here is actually working working really well. Yeah. yeah. Um, so whether it's done in post or, or in camera, I think you know, I think it works works well. Yeah. So thank you for sharing that, Annie. And um, look, you know, good luck with the gig. Yeah, keep us posted on on how it goes. Um, okay, Dave's been obviously working with his missus again, and he's got nothing that he can legally sh share with us. Uh, that's fine, Dave. That's fine, mate. That's fine. Uh, and he says the horse was dirty, had to desaturate. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, so was that background blurred by you in Photoshop, or was it, or was it actually captured in in camera at the time? Uh, I don't think image upload. I'll just, I'll just, I've just reloaded it now, Ian. I'll just check and see. Oh, there we go. Cool. Yeah, we got. Yeah, we got some more images here. So we got Mark's um, image coming in here. Mark says, big influence on my creative side, thanks. Beautiful image, Mark, love this. Um, really nice, clean, skin retouching as well. Not not overdone, not plasticky. Skin looks skin looks real. Yeah, good job, man, good job. Lighting's pretty good as well. Just watch, just watch these blown out highlights. I know I like the fact that, you know, the exposure here is really nice. You know, it's it's adding shape, shape to the model, but it's not, um, but, you know, but, but, it, but it's not, blowing out some of the um, color and stuff here on this side. So uh, a really cool shot. Yeah, just just watch the watch the exposure on that one. Yeah, really cool though. Yeah, thank you for sharing that one. Not the wife log client. Well, <laughs> I'm only winding you up, Dave, sorry. Hopefully she wasn't in the room and get you in trouble. <laughs> uh, let's have a look. So Ian's shot here. Oh, I recognize this um, lady, Ian. I've, worked with her in the past really really impressive model super active if, if you're you yeah you, you're still here Ian. yeah um yeah really good model Re a lot of movement you know she's just so much energy yeah really cool um so yeah so this is probably my favorite one from the day shoot at the concrete house this was a year ago last week just curious if you would change any more than increasing the red 
so so you shot this at our event last year then ian right this is, this is a year old i thought this was a more, more of a recent shot okay cool so this is probably my favorite one from the shoot last year just curious if you would change any more than increasing the red okay by the way this is the original jpeg only rotated okay um the thing with this right the thing with this is similar sort of things what we've been talking about with a couple of these other images is where the eye is going first and us trying to manage manage where the eye goes and really it's about like the bright like the brightest part of the image how can we kind of manage that as as best as possible so i just, just want to maybe just darken this in on this side a little bit So all I'm, I'm not worried about what's going on here. I'm just worried about trying to, I'm going to feather this in in a second before you think, what on earth is he doing? So I've just masked it in here. So now we can kind of look at what we need to change. So the reds are probably okay. Let's have a look. So we got a lot of yellow in there that just looks dirty. So we want to we want to fix that as much as we can. So let's take out some of that some of that yellow down there. And I'm not sure what the original looks like, but bear in mind we can we can kind of apply a similar sort of process here to to, to kind of cheat a little bit. So here we want, um, you know, say we want a bit of extra red here. And again, we could, you know, we want extra red here. So we're just gonna bring this green down because that's the, that's the um, magenta. And then similar sort of thing here. We wanna be careful we don't have it too yellow and muddy, but we could try that. Okay, so then what we can do is we can we can just hide that and then come in with a brush here. And and just and just paint in a little bit of color on here, right? Just to just to kind of bring that back. So you should see there, and we can, uh, I mean, if it's, I mean, you could, you could double it up if you wanted, knock that back. It's obviously a little bit too much. But yeah, we want to like, so, so, so we want to, we want to keep our, keep our viewers attention on the subject and not drifting straight out of shot down there where it's, where it's, you know, too light. Um, and then on top of that, we kind of want to mirror or, or, or echo the color that we have here. So I just wanted to add it, add some more red back onto her there. But you, you can see how our eyes are drawn to the to the left hand side of that image, right? Whereas you know now we just we're coming more of a focus back onto um, her there. So from there, you could you, you could you could probably play around with with a little bit of a grade if you wanted, but without leaning into what you've already got there. Yeah, so what's what I'm saying? So without le you, you've only really got one choice. You can't really do too much of a grade on this apart from leaning into the red and green that you've already got. That's what I was trying to say. Uh, Although saying that you, you could do that, which I think actually like the neon colors suits better with the outfit, right? Interesting. So let's come back to these a second, just play around with this.
Now, we can only really get away with dramatic uh, color grades like this because we've got two very distinct colors in the image and we're not worrying about accurate or perfect color because the skin tone is already colored. So we're not worrying about making the skin tone look, look accurate. So, you know, you can get away with doing dramatic color grades like this or color shifts like this um, only because you've got crazy colors there to begin with. So look, this is, you know, you don't, you don't have to go down this route, but my issue with red and green is always the fact that it kind of tends to always look like a Christmas card, right? So whereas I feel like going something like this, I kind of feel like suits the styling a little bit more, yeah? So I just did an apply image there just to darken down some of those highlights. And then we can just bring up those shadows. Something like that. Okay, so, you know, so we were, I think that works. I think that works. And just in terms of trying to think about the styling and that sort of thing, I think, you know, I think going down this route of more of a neon, you know, blues and pinks and stuff here, we can probably get away with over the Christmas cardy red and green. Yeah. He says, yep, you were there. I should have mentioned it. Like, yeah, no, it's all good, man. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. Um, I thought I, thought, I was going to say, I thought I recognized it, yeah. Uh, Kylie Minogue. It, I do know what you mean. Yes, that's true. Yeah, it was, it was something like that, wasn't there? Um, yeah, you're right, yeah. Uh, does, does that kind of make sense? Does that kind of make sense, Ian? Yeah, hopefully it does. Yeah. Um, okay, so I think, uh, I think that was, oh, Brett added an image here last minute. Ooh, these are sharp, Brett, nice. This is beautiful work, right? Yeah, beautiful work. Um, sorry, I didn't I didn't see you in, in chat there, Brett. This is really nice, yeah. Shot this is agency model, very fair complexion, was tough for me for some reason, not sure why. Excellent work, man, love this. Yeah, really nicely done. Yeah, really, really nicely done. Um, actually kind of difficult to make these colors work, but you nailed it. Yeah, these soft um, baby blue uh, and soft powder pink and, and red hair and freckles, difficult to pull off, but yeah, absolutely you know, really nicely done with the, with the skin here as well, and you know, the lips and that sort of thing. Yeah, really great work, man. great work, yeah. Pin sharp as well, yeah. Um, if you're in chat, Brett, what, what, what camera are you using for that one? Yeah, really nice shot, love that. Yeah, in fact, one of the one of the best ones I've seen from you, man. This is really good, super clean retouch as well. Really good job. Yeah, did we miss anybody else? I think we're all good. Uh, yes, thanks, Ted. That reminds me of your post. This is my edit, and this is your edit. <laughs> uh, Skimmy texture must be a bit tough with freckles now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's always usually very tough with um, freckles. Yeah. Um, I'm guessing her skin was extremely good to begin with, but yes, it, it can be can be tricky. Um, I would say that Brett has done a nice job with the lighting to begin with. It's a nice clean lighting, so you're not trying to fix anything crazy. Um, but, you know, even adjusting, you know, pimples and that sort of thing would be would be f f fairly straightforward, yeah. Uh, so come back to Ian's comment there. This reminds me of your post, this is my edit and this is your edit. What did, what, what, was, what, did I do something like that, Ian, in the past? Yeah. Um, but yeah. So yeah, thanks for sharing that one. Last minute, Brett. Yeah, really cool. Yeah, love that. Yeah, great job, buddy. Great job. Really good work. Um, all right, then, guys. So always a pleasure, as always. Overran. Um, I don't know why. Maybe because you guys were talking so much. I, I can only assume that's the that's the reason. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm just going to leave you with a couple of links here. Don't forget, still doing my, still doing a lot of the online workshops and mentoring, doing those every week with, with you guys all over the world, which is which is always fun, always good to uh, talk to new people, see what they're up to. Um, by all means, check check those out. Um, but yeah, um, 
and obviously look i mean if, if you're looking for inspiration that sort of thing i mean we, i've just i've just quickly gone over a couple of things here but there's tons of stuff on the site there's you know literally hundreds of articles on the i think i've been doing technique tuesdays for 10 years now so you know if you're looking for inspiration and things like that uh just have a dig through right just have a dig through there's tons of light, light lighting setups in there for you guys to try most of them achievable home studios that sort of thing so yeah um with you know regular regular gear so definitely um definitely check it out but yeah thanks so much guys thank you for everybody for posting an image it's great to see you guys work incredible images as always incredible caliber of um people in this in this group just yeah awesome to see um so yeah thank you so much for sharing those images thank you for you guys for hanging out asking questions and um yeah sharing ideas with me and we had a good chat tonight about um everything lighting related loved it always good um at what point is it spelunking through thanks again jack spelunking isn't spelunking like going diving in deep underground caves and stuff i have done that years ago um i haven't heard that word in forever um yeah no worries Simon, man yeah no worries mikhail thank you buddy appreciate your patience with my um pronunciations so yeah thank you liz good to see you again glad to see that you're out there and uh you know helping other people at the camera club and that sort of thing yeah thank you so much to everybody that tuned in and we'll do this again in a couple of weeks take care guys see you then